coming back at you. I'm smooth. Today I got KDL 33. I got my man Lucky Lefty. We here to give you sports talk, smoking cigars, drinking a little liquor, and we're coming at you with some of the hottest stuff that's out right now. KDL. Rumors are Caitlyn Jenner wants to close naked in SI. Sports Illustrated show. How do you feel about that? I saw that. First of all, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, no man that was an Olympic champion should ever... Well, I guess it's his choice to change to a female. My understanding is he didn't have the full operation though, right? So he still has his like... His joint. His yeah. joint. Sure. Right? Yeah. As a female wearing a dress, correct? Is that correct? Right. Okay. Right. So you're gonna pose new. That's the story you're talking about, right? He's gonna that's pose new. That's what they're saying in for, Boston, Gossip, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so is that SI, Playboy? He's gonna pose news. So you're gonna pose to, new. If it's ebony, he's naked. Man. He's naked. Gotcha. So he's gonna pose new. Wearing a dress. And he's gonna take the dress off and pose new. He hasn't had the operation yet, correct? Right. So you're going from a female from a dress to having a package. Still. But you're going to pose new. Well, how ridiculous is that? Come on. How, how ridiculous is that? Where you going with this? I'm going with it. It's ridiculous, man. First of all, you should have never got the Courage Award <laughs> for going on the Espos. You should have never got that. So now you, you're taking this. You, it's a money thing. It's a, it's a marketing thing. So now you're, you're, you're riding this wave and now you're going to pose nude because they're going to pay you. How are you going to pose nude as a female with a package? How are you going to do that? So who? who okay, KDL. What is that, man? I got you. Let's just answer that. What is Lucky. that? Lucky. Let uh, me hear what your thoughts on this. I'm just going to start off with what the fuck? Why is this even conversation, number one? It's a fucking dude in the dress, right? At the end of the day, I'm not calling that motherfucker Katie. You Bruce Jim. So... We need to stop bullshitting and lying. You motherfucking Bruce, Bruce Jenner with motherfucking bad weed and dress on. So he don't got rights shit. Right. You, you basically right. you fuck his rights. You basically the Andre Jordan in the damn. Like we gotta stop. But those we gotta stop lying. It, it, it's a dude in a fucking dress. So yeah. that's it. I mean, so you trying? What you saying is it's a thin line or is it a, a, a huge divide? Ain't no motherfucking line. Ain't not, it's terrible. Fuck that. It's no. terrible. Kid it's terrible, man. And, and it's it, it, it's terrible. Hold on, I'm gonna take it somewhere else. Look at where we at in America. We're in America where a dude can go to a female and then a couple months later pose nude and get paid for it. And people follow it. And then we're in America. I, I could go on the Donald Trump running for president thing, where we at in America. I, I can go there, but I won't. Look at where we at in America, man. This is being forced down our kids' throat. Where an Olympic, your parents watched an Olympic Go melt. Weedy's box. Weedy's box. Weedy's that box. dude. He was that dude, Weedy. man. And then when the time to raise your child, your children, and your grandchild, you have to say, hey, that's the guy that was on the Bruce. That was the guy that was on the Weedy's commercial. <laughs> He's a female now. Okay. Okay. Come on, man. Where we at, man? Okay. Where are we at? <laughs> I get you. I get you. That topic we can go all day on. You got your views. You got your views. Got the world has, has their the views. Fuck, but we're gonna move along. We're going to talk about Texas A&M, mm. where this is about recruitment issues and <clears throat> decommitting of, of players to these, these high-profile colleges, universities. KDL, let me hear what you got to say. There was a report, or there was a, um, a story that was printed that an assistant coach tweeted out a couple comments on recruitment. And there was a decommitment from a recruit that changed his mind and opened his recruiting back up. So he's not going to Texas A&M. So the assistant coach tweeted out, you got to be loyal to a program. You know, if you commit to something, he hadn't signed, first off. He orally committed. He orally committed. He hadn't signed. So the assistant coach uh, tweeted out. He tweeted, first off, <laughs> on social media. But he tweeted that... You have to be loyal when you commit to something. Go ahead through with it. And then he committed. And then he tweeted, you know, weak-minded or something to that effect. Weak-minded or weak individuals, something like that. 
which caused another recruit to decommit. That hadn't signed yet, but he decommitted okay. based on the tweet from the coach. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I'm, I see where you're going. You know what I mean? I see where you're going. First of all, there is no loyalty in college recruitment. This is a business. And whether, whether people want to look at it like this, the NCAA or whatever, this is a business. There is no loyalty. Because that same player can be recruited and signed with Texas A&M. A you. year later, the coach can leave. I got you. And leave him down there. Hold on, hold on. I, there is no loyalty. I can feel it. I feel the heat coming from this side. So I'm going to go to lefty out. over here. Lefty, what what do you think? Look, I think, I think dude made a, he made, he made he made a valid point. He probably shouldn't have put the weak-minded and all that shit in there. But at the end of the day, man, if, if you're not sure, don't commit in any type of way. It's still a lesson learned. He never signed. You know, it don't matter if you signed. He orally committed, right? He said, I'm, I'm coming. I'm going here, right? So you held up a spot for another for another student athlete. Okay. In, in in a sense, I mean, if you tell them that, so they holding this spot for you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the the bottom line. It's not like I think as as young as young men and ladies, whatever, when it comes to sport, athletic, athletics, anything in life, right? All he's saying is, man, you made a commitment. You said. You coming? Did he, he ever sign it though? Okay, okay. I'm not. Matter. He said it, no, it if, if, you, if, if you point, say you coming, no, 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 it does matter. Let me let me tell you why it matters. Let me let me tell you why this matters. Okay. Because if I didn't sign that, and I'm a quarterback. If I didn't sign the letter of intent, then you're still recruiting another quarterback because I never signed. So you don't know if I'm coming or not. Then it so shouldn't be no oral not, commitments then. Well, it shouldn't be no oral commitments. But but but, dog, peep this. If I didn't sign. The letter of intent to say I'm coming to Texas A&M. You're still recruiting another quarterback. You supposed Are to. You? You're supposed to exactly. So if you're supposed to do that on your end, right? Right. Because you don't know if I'm coming or not. Then why shouldn't I, on my end, explore my opportunities too? I haven't signed anywhere. Right. I it's said still, I would what you got. What you got? It's, still, on, it's, it's still business. It's still, it's, it's, still, it's still. If he told this program, I'm coming. I'm yes. si I'm going to sign with you all. Okay. Right. So obviously the parents had to be involved in this too. If well, this was the decision we're made, we're considering you. If the, if this was the decision made, now if they'd have said that, then it wouldn't have been an oral commitment. He obviously told them he was coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So did he give a reason for pulling out? Did he give a reason for all of a sudden? He doesn't have to give a reason. Okay. Just like you don't have to give a reason if you sign another quarterback before I actually. The key word is you don't give me a reason. The key word is this. Part part of the storyline. The dude's father came out and said that. The coach did not keep up communication with him. After they went to a couple of visits and all that, coach did not keep up communication. You know why? And they didn't like that. Because he was recruiting someone else. But, like you said, it's a business. So even, if signed, a baby in him. even if he signed, even if he signed, shouldn't they still try to get another quarterback? Because, of course, he's going to be there. He's he's not gonna so so why, is it, why is it okay for the university to recruit other people, but it's not okay for the player himself to explore his other opportunities? You can't have it both ways, man. This is a business. Just like, either, either, either. Just like anything else. It's just like anything else. You commit to your, you make a certain commitment to your job, right? You can leave. Well, my job is paying me at that point. We can, well, I'm committed. That's to another argument. I'm getting paid. That's a whole other argument. Yeah. With, with that, this is different. This is this is why this is a business, man. Stop treating these athletes, man, like they have to do everything that the organization, which is the NCAA, says. When the NCAA can do whatever they want to do with these athletes, but whatever school he goes to, he's not getting paid. So that, that. That's, that don't matter. Whatever school he goes to, he's not getting. Whatever school he goes to, it's still the same business. But when we talk about payment, that's so, a, so it's the same business. Same business. Same business. Same business. Same business. Whether it's Texas A&M or it's anywhere else, it's still the same. It's you, you're still dealing with the same bullshit. So yeah. now you, you you open it up, so y'all can recruit me again. Like I'm back. I'm back on the market. Pretty I'm back much. on the market. I'm a free agent. That's pretty much what he I'm, said. I'm, I'm a free agent again. Here's pretty the here, here, here's the whole problem. The coach tweeted out. Some shit. That That's shit right. We're gonna take a commercial. Humidor Sports coming at you. Yeah, at Eduardo's out in Richmond Park. We'll be right back. Fuck that. Look. She <laughs> said he was coming there. And motherfucker. Did he ever say? Did he ever say? He told me. He should have just said, y'all, I'm considering y'all. Y'all one of my top. What if the coach get another one? Okay, we're here at Eduardo Limon Cigar Lounge uh, over here in Richmond Park. 
Um, we're here with Brian, the owner. Brian, let tell us a little bit about Eduardo's here, and where they can find you, what they can find in here. Well, we're located 3721 Salt Trail in Richmond Park. What you can find here, cigars, hookah, big TVs, good time. All around fun. So come check it out. Also check out the humidor. You'll, they'll be posted on webcast, on YouTube. Check us out, check out the show. We, show, we shoot here, live. Um, and then closing. In closing, we shoot here at Eduardo Lamont's, hey, May 21st, Humidor Sports presents Diva Leaf release party, man. Gonna be a great event, May 21st is on a Saturday evening. Be on the lookout for that, man. Check it out, it's gonna be a great time. Come check out the show. You can either come sit in on us with it and you know, give your own opinion, give it, you know, how you feeling about the show. And uh, man, support my man Brian. Always appreciate it. Welcome back, Humidor Sports. Like I said, we here, KDL 33, my man Lucky Lefty. I'm your man Smooth. We're about to go in and talk about Jeremy Tunzel and his draft status and how it plummeted. This time, Lucky Lefty, let me hear you. Well, let me just say, whatever hating ass motherfucker posted that video should be executed motherfucking on site. You know, it, it, I mean, you cost a man about seven million dollars, right? I mean, he dropped from, he was supposed to be number one overall, top player in the draft, he dropped all the way to 13. Mm -hmm. Because some asshole posted a video of him with the gas mask on getting high and shit. Which, you know, he was what? And it was his sophomore year, so what, your sophomore year, you like, what, 19 years old? You know, you you young, 19, 20, you young, you do you do dumb shit. Number one, camera phone. Speaking for camera phone's not a devil. Is that experience? A little bit. But don't tell my business. So, I mean, but camera phones and all that bullshit, but for somebody to post it the day of the draft, they put this shit out there the day of the motherfucking draft. Before the draft. The, the, like, the day of it. You know what I mean? I mean, this man. The draft was going on. Right. The, the, the shit posted. That so, was buzzing during draft time. I mean, it, it was, it was, that, that's ridiculous. It stuff. was all over the, the big screen. That's now. ridiculous. So, why can't. Everybody did some dumb shit when they were young. We all did some, some silly shit. We just. We're older. We didn't have all these video phones and all this to, to show what the hell we did. But, but who, who would even do that? Like, why would you even do some shit like that? I mean, it makes no fucking right. sense. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to take the other side of it, okay, and I'm going to say, uh, let me I'm hear going what to you say, say, yes, the person was wrong for posting it. But somebody got on his Twitter account and posted the picture. Now, he was in the in the bomb in, in the mask doing the bomb, but he also was taking the mask off, showing his face, right? Which means right. he took the picture. So, if you are an athlete. And I know we 18, 19, 20 years old, but he's stupid for doing it. And he's stupid for letting somebody take a picture of But that's of the time of your life you're oh, supposed oh, to do stupid shit, though. That's the time of your life you do you stupid shit. You do, you do stupid shit, yes. I've done it. I've done a lot of wild shit in college, man. All right, don't tell him. But I never let, I, I ain't gonna tell him myself. I ain't gonna tell him myself. I'm, my eligibility is over now. But <laughs> no one took a picture of it. See, no one took a, no, that I know of. It never came out. But no one took a picture of it and put it on my but Twitter that's a, account. That's a society. See, how did, it get you, get, how did it get on his Twitter account? Let well, me ask you that. Yeah, how did it get on I, his Twitter account? I don't account? understand how. So that means he posted it well, on me, his Twitter account. Let let somebody went question. in and hacked it. Let me ask you this question. Like you said, we do dumb shit when we were we in, in our teens and all that. Should these pro athletes or athletes to be pros be judged by what they did in their past? I, I, you know what, I, I, I don't think so at all because when you're at that age, you're not thinking about the future. You're not thinking about like tomorrow. Like, you know, we was that age, man. You, you living for the moment. You kicking it, you partying, you're away from your parents, you doing your thing. I mean, come on, man. As long as that man producing on the field and, and he didn't come to the game high, or whatever it is, I mean, his senior year was his best year. This is two years ago. Man. I'm feeling so he on this side. I don't think he should be judged. I agree with you. So why did he, he drop 13 we all, slots? We all do stupid shit. He cost himself $10 million first of all. Exactly. But I don't think he should be judged as a person for that. Because the very motherfuckers right. that's making the decisions on him did some stupid shit in college too. Just exactly. wasn't posted. 
They what not I, what I, on trial right now. He right. Is. So oh, I'm what, I, what I blame him is Watch him out. what I blame him on is take allowing the picture to be taken. See, if I'm doing some dumb shit, and you say he was a freshman or sophomore, he's a senior now, he's, he's graduating, right? right? Okay, if you're a freshman or sophomore, you still realize that you're an athlete at the University of Mississippi. You're a big time athlete. You know, that's a big time program. So, no one should take a picture of you smoking weed. But you're still immature. You gotta do that in your dorm on that's your own. Your but you can't do that. That's you can't let a motherfucker take a picture. You gotta know that. That's what you do. All right. you but you gotta know that, right. man. Yeah, we, got we got healthy. This, this, this are the rules of being an athlete. Kev, we got a health, healthy discussion on this, man. We can we can go robust on this all day long. But I know y'all want to move along, and we're going to move along and talk about the NBA. All right? I know you, you love it. the NBA. Let's do it. KDL, you love the NBA. Let's do it. How about the comments by Charles Barkley regarding the Cavs, Hawks game, with 25 three-pointers, lefty. Thank you. Let me get this shot. Where we at? <laughs> Fuck what Barkley talking about. Look, all that old hurt a motherfucker, foul a motherfucker, hard shit. It's like we said in previous shows. If you don't want to get clowned, stop a motherfucker. You stop him. First of all, this is the playoffs. This is a series. We in game two. I'm trying to put my foot in your neck. I want you to be down. You're going to be down 2 0. In the next game, you see us. You got to know I just beat you by 30 some points. We just saw. OKC bounced back against San Antonio, right? San Antonio killed them that first game. What, 30, 39 points, 35, 39 points, whatever they beat them by, they put and OKC they put came back. But I don't care. If I'm the coach, I'm telling them, keep raining threes on them. Keep raining threes. Bury their ass. So you Take their heart. You feel Take their heart. Cleveland did nothing wrong. You feel Cleveland was, was on nothing. point. They, they were on point. They ain't do, what the hell they do wrong? KDL. Mm -hmm. What they do you wrong? You got a heart attack over here. What they do Let me wrong? hear what you're talking about, baby. Come on. I 100 percent agree with Charles Bar. I'm gonna tell you what. You gonna foul a three point shooter? You gonna hit him in the jaw? I'm gonna foul the shit out of you. I'm not gonna take him out. Let me let me preface that. I'm not gonna take him out and hurt him so they can't play the next game. I want him to play the next game. But as old school basketball, you don't allow that to happen. It's not that LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Love was shooting threes on, right? But if you got a bum like Dante Jones, Dante Jones can shoot. Dante three. Jones shouldn't even be in the goddamn three. league, man. You know that. He shoot. They was up thirty. Dante Jones shouldn't be in the league. They was up thirty. Dante Jones come out shooting threes. Some motherfucker you ain't never heard of come off the bench shooting threes. Yeah, I want to shoot. For three. the sake of setting a record, that is embarrassing. That is saying we don't respect you. Fuck you. We don't care nothing about you. Yes, we put ourselves in that position, so I agree with you. Keep shooting threes, right? And it's a serious. Ourselves. I gotta play you again in two days. You gotta play me again in two days, but you're I'm up trying to take 30. Your heart. You are 30 right now. I'm trying and to snatch your heart. And you're still coming in the bench players okay, that yeah. don't even play. Okay, is yeah. coming in shooting so three threes point on shooting team. Okay, yeah. One of which shouldn't be in the league. You. So what? Three point your shooting stance team. is that no matter how the game was going, when they went to that bench. Yeah. They should have started shooting. They should have just, just playing the game no. and not trying to embarrass. Somebody, somebody should have been them. hard fouled. So it should have been at least maybe not a fight. If they came to the hole, yeah, that's a If they came to, the, yeah, that's that's somebody, they came to the bucket and you're trying to stop a layup or a dunk, that's different. Right. But you talking about motherfuckers just shooting threes. I mean, they shooting threes. Some Defend of, it. Some of them shot layups. And so the let, very let person that shot a layup should have been floored, they didn't put on his ass. So since they didn't show up, they should just get embarrassed. It's the playoffs, like Lefty said. Either you're going to come and play, or you're going to go home. I agree with you the cause of it. Like, we didn't play hard. We all ain't getting embarrassed. Right. Right? But somebody should be floored. Somebody should be hard fouled. Not taken out. What is that going to do? That was do? a poor choice of words. Let me ask you this. What is that going to do? It's going to send a message that when we get back to Atlanta for game three, we're not having this. So we're going to whoop your ass again. That's all this is. Well, say. whatever. If, if you're the better team, then you're just simply the better team. We can't beat you. So, okay. I get your point. But hold on. Hold somebody on. should have been floored. I get your point. Who was going to do that on that team? When you look at the players. On Atlanta? Who was going to do that? Ken Bazemore. Like, they had pulled everybody out. Ken Bazemore. He's up the game. Ken Bazemore is he's a good. He's a record he rotation. You don't, want, you don't want to lose he him. He was up the game. So who was going to do that for 
a lot. You don't want to get suspended for some bullshit. I don't. I don't. Is that know. the coach's responsibility to tell that man that's the last person on the bench? Yes. You go in there. Yes. And you put it on somebody. Yes. So you saying it's the coaches? It's either the coaches or someone on the bench or someone should know basketball. Well, the leader is on that team. Should know. Yes. So I don't know their bench. I don't, I don't know who their goon is or whatever. But somebody who barely plays, if ever, yeah, yeah. should have went in there and floored somebody. Now, watch this, watch this. I mean, man, do you remember when, when uh, what, what's the dude that was married to the Kardashian? Humphreys. Humphreys. Humphreys grabbed LeBron and he grabbed his jersey. LeBron right. was trying to go and he grabbed his jersey and just threw him. Yeah. At the end, it was like the end of the third quarter. Right. Humphreys tried it. He didn't care. LeBron got up, got mad. People came to him and Humphreys okay. just walked off. You got to do that, man. You can't let people come down and embarrass you. Like, I'm not, and, and, and it's not, it's not just shooting the threes. They were right, dancing right, on the bench right. and shit. Let they were talking give me, shit. Give me, give me you can't do that. You got to. It's, 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 not, it's not just embarrassing. Look, as, a, as someone who played organized sports, I would feel worse if some team let up on me like they felt sorry for me. Like, I feel sorry for you, so I'm not going to shoot. I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to, you know, just because we beating the shit out of y'all, I'm going to let up. That would hurt my pride more than the motherfucker put me away. If, if, if you really, if you really that dude, you got that dog in you, when a motherfucker putting you away and I got to see you again in two days. So it's the no Vaseline. So we going to Man, when I got to see you in two days, when I see you in two days, okay. man, no now, now I'm hyped up. Just like OKC did. OKC came back the next game and they balled out and they won the game. That's what you do. You don't get mad at Throw motherfuckers down it. I'm not right saying they should have did it at the end of the game, but they should have did it during the game. about to take a break. They gonna keep going back and forth, doing this commercial. Floor, motherfucker. Let them man. go ahead and shut his throat. We'll what be right back. Do? They should have floored them in the second quarter. What the court. hell was it gonna do? What, what was that? If they hit 15 threes, you should have. Welcome back to Humidor Sports. Real talk, cigars, liquor. It's all about the life. When we left off, we was talking about Charles Barkley and his comments. KDL, Lucky Lefty. Everybody was going in. Right now, we're going back to the NBA. And we're going to talk about kind of like the referee situation, what's been going on in the NBA playoffs, you know, and I'm going to let everybody chime in on the show. Uh, KDL, how do you feel about the referee and what's been going on? Uh, I think you got a lot to say about this. Uh, I think the referee is terrible uh, at the end of games. And I can, I can, obviously, I can point out the San Antonio, uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City game, game one. During the last, I don't know if it was three, was it three seconds left? Something like that? Yeah, three, three, four seconds left. Deion Waiters took the ball out of bounds. Now, technically, if you know basketball, you get three feet. The guy that's guarding, you get three feet. So, you can put your hands up and all this kind of shit, wave the ball, whatever, but you get three feet. Deion Waiters, who was a player that was standing out of bounds, and the ref is counting. The ref is right there. He had one, two, like you hear this. Deion Waiters took the basketball while standing out of bounds and shoved it against Ginobili's body. Violation number one. But if you watch the replay, Ginobili was actually standing out of bounds when he did it. So when Ginobili was waving and shit, he stepped up and was standing out of bounds. That's two violations. So he threw the ball in. The ref let him throw the ball in. Play went on, San Antonio had a, 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 a chance to win the game. Right. LaMarcus Hargreaves got fouled when he went up for a layup. Steven Adams ran at, at uh, Mills for the three-pointer. A fan grabbed Adams and then let him back in the field of play. It's another violation. These refs, man, need to be held accountable. For what happens at the end of games, it's no different than when Paul George threw the, the African guy, whatever the hell his name is, the African guy on Indiana. And he was clearly shoved by DeRozan. That's a foul. As Whether a, he would have made the free throws or not, that's a foul. As a ref, okay. as, a, as, as a ref, Lefty, as a ref, do you want to be the one that decides the outcome of the game? Nope. I don't want to be exactly. the one that, that decides the outcome, the outcome of the game, the game right? but I don't want to be the one that not does not does my do my job. I mean, but just and call a call. Just like you said, the players still got to make so the what, free throw. What's fair? No, wait, what's wait, wait, wait. So just like you said, you had two violations, right? Waiters pushed uh, 
Was he green? What he push? He pushed Ginobili. And Ginobili's foot so, at the so, time right, was out of bounds. What he push? Right. So they watched each other. But at, but at the same time, he didn't get three feet. So they kind of watched each other. They out. watched each other out. When they, you right? got caught something. You got caught something. But what? But which one did you make? Which one do you make? It's hey man, go, go to the go to the go to the replay booth. Or do you make a no call? Which call do you make? Or do you? You can't make a no. Don't make a call. You can't make a no call. Because at the end of the day, wait a minute. When the refs start deciding the games. The game is fucked up. The ref is not deciding the game. He's calling what's happening on the floor. I mean, floor. It, it is the game. It's, it's what's happening. You don't He's want to calling be the ref. what's happening on the floor. You, you never want to be the ref if you're counting one. So you're trying to count five seconds. Right? Yeah. You're trying to count five seconds. Yes, but sir. at the same time, you're seeing a bunch of other shit. We're talking about human error. You're looking at a whole bunch it's of shit. So the refs on the floor, too. But they're watching other players. It's all about position. They're watching other players. You're right. They're watching other players. It's all so about at the position. same time. So if you're watching other players, then you have to. Hey, man, you paid a lot of money to ref this game. And it's not easy, though. So your but job not is easy. not just to say one, two, but three. But it's four. not easy. You got to notice a motherfucker with a ball out of bounds hit a player in bounds with the ball. The same player. You got to call that, the man. The same player didn't get three feet, though. Like you said, call a violation. Call a double violation and do what you got to do. What's the double violation going to do? I don't know. Jump the ball up. Do what you got to do, man. You, you have to call something. So you saying? So you saying? You got to call something. Y'all gonna do over? Keep it. Keep it playing. You got to call something. Keep it playing because they wash each other out. Wash it's no it call. Out. And sometimes so you like saying you got to call you gotta something. Call. You got to make a call. You can't just let it go and say, okay, well he got the ball in. Because actually, Waiters was about to, Waiters was about to step in. Like he was leaning forward, and the way he did that. He leaned forward and pushed off to nobody. How would Bulls fans feel if the ref would have called a push off with Jordan and Russell? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now, now y'all trying to get real deep. Good thing you said. Good thing you said. Good thing you said that. Hold on. The outcome would have been different. Don't respond to that. The outcome would have been different. My question to you is: When Jordan pushed Russell, Russell was still in bounds. 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 Russell was still was it would it have been a correct call? It would have been a correct call, but it would decide Then what are we game. talking about? But it would have decided the game. But, but it, it doesn't matter. If it's the a correct call, you make the correct call. Now, y'all talking period. about history. Y'all talking about history. Right. Well, you make the correct yeah. call, though. Yeah, we are, but at the same time. Wait, but at the same time, but Cam, that changes history. With the ref been wrong, though. Yeah, yeah, if he time. did his job and he made the correct call, Look, it is what it is. I would, I would prefer the refs to stay out of the fucking game at the end of it and let the players decide on the court than to make a call and decide on the free throw line or some bullshit like that. A, a period. I mean, we either want the refs to be super strict or we want them to fall back and let the players decide. But it's but it's not being super strict. It, it really is. The money. If I'm standing out of bounds, had double violations. Yeah. So it's a no call. What they call it? You gotta call something, man. So you call a double violation and it's no call, so you jump the ball. It's still a disadvantage to San Antonio. It because I don't give a ball. damn who's the disadvantage of. It ha it's you have to do your job and call the call. If the refs are so, don't decide the game. You don't want the refs deciding the game. That's what we don't. We don't want the refs deciding the outcome of the game. Agreed. And San Antonio All right. had, All right. they had plenty of chances I mean, to win the game. When it's an obvious call, I can't no, stand out of bounds with the Lefty. ball and push you with the ball. I can't Lefty. do that. And you can't give me three feet. You got to give hold me on, three Hold on, hold on, Lefty KEL. Yeah. All right. We're going to agree to disagree on that one. Because I see everybody got heat. Ain't going to agree to disagree. Uh, All right. So, no, no, fuck so. Check it out. Can't stand out of bounds and push you with the ball. You can't do that, man. I was checking out the Humidor Sports page. Check it out. Y'all need to go to the Humidor Sports page. Check us out. The question of the day is, who do you think is going to win the NBA championship? So now, this is a question out there. I'm going to come to each one of y'all. Can you tell me what you're thinking? As of right now. As of right now, who do you think is going to win the championship? Lefty. Bam. I always go with the team playing the best right now. That's Cleveland. They playing the best. Why? NBA's worst nightmare. Hold on. Hold on. Hold NBA's on. worst nightmare. Why? Is is LeBron, Kyrie, and Love playing together. It's the NBA's worst <coughs> nightmare. These three yeah. motherfuckers playing. Right, stop, because we're gonna come back to you. I get we'll come back to you. I get that. Okay. Where you at? I'm going to San Antonio right now because um I would have won Golden State. KDL. Lefty. Take a quick break. And we're going to come back. 
Never, no. Check it out. We going, we going. Ain't no need for us to go to the break. Give me your, your strong points on the I'm gonna tell you, right now. I'm going to tell you San Antonio because... You got 30 seconds to give me your best. You don't have a healthy Steph Curry on Golden State. If you have a healthy, healthy Steph Curry, San Antonio can't beat Golden State. So I'm going to go San Antonio because they're actually playing the best ball right now. You can say Golden State is winning. They are winning. But they're playing against bums. When they run into San Antonio, they're not going to be free-flowing like that against San Antonio. You're simply not. Because they have no answer for LaMarcus Arbridge. None. So I got to No. Hold on. Hold no on, answer hold on. for LaMarcus Arbridge. 30 so, seconds. No. 30 seconds. Give me what you So get. right now, that's what you're saying. So they go West Carolina's Finals. They beating each other up. Right now, Cleveland cakewalking through. They well, they playing against. Walking through it. It don't matter. They, you cakewalking through. So Atlanta? It don't matter. You can't walk into it. You beat it. They still have not lost. They 7-0 right now. 7-0. I bet they lose in the Miami. Fight. We'll see. I'm going to give Miami two games. We'll I agree see. with you. Cleveland is going to come out we'll to see. East. I agree right. with you on that. Humidor Sports. Yeah. Check it out. KDL. He's going with the Spurs. Free fall. Lucky Lefty. He going with the Cavs. Y'all stay tuned. Because when we come back to the next show... We're going to expound about it. We're going to see where everybody is at. Then you'll get your answer. We out. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, uh, particularly my mother. Uh, shout out to you, Mom. Love you. Phoenix, Arizona. Sorry I couldn't be there this weekend. Love you. You and Grandma. Much love. You raised me right. Much love. Hard shot, man. Mother's Day weekend, happy Mother's Day, man. And I want to send a special shout out to those who don't have their mothers here physically right now, man. And that's 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 deep. I, I do think about you all Mother's Day weekend, man. I know it's it's tough. My mom's still here and I, I know that some of you, you know, are going through things right now if your mom isn't here. But happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, man. And keep doing what you do, man. Just it's a beautiful thing, man. Nothing like a mom. Nothing like it. What's up? Humidor Sports. I'd like to say happy Mother's Day out there to all the mothers that's out there. But I also like to say happy Mother's Day to those fathers that have had to take on that mothership role uh, for whatever reason that is. Um, big ups to you because you're playing dual roles out here. So I want to say happy Mother's Day to the fathers and all the mothers that's out there. Raise your glasses. Give it all sports. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.